Good morning, everyone. With over 25 million social media followers, our next guest is one of the most influential medical educators online. And joining us live this morning is family medicine physician and YouTube creator, the legendary Dr. Mike Barshevsky here. Let's go. Welcome Let's to go. Wow. Dr. Mike. What an introduction. Ooh. Thank you so much. Welcome, Dr. Mike. I'm excited to be here. Appreciate it. What are you doing in Toronto? What's uh, happening? Well, you know, I'm doing a little bit of medical education with the YouTube folks because uh, we're trying to expand the field of health online. Mm -hmm. That's where everyone goes these days to get their answers. And if you want to be a good doctor, you got to be where the people are. For sure. Very For sure. good. And uh, now you as a good doctor, training wise, okay, so you went to New York Institute of Technology. You did all of this, okay? You got your Bachelor of Science in Life Sciences. Uh, you got your doctorate in osteopathic medicine in honors by the age of 24. How the heck did you do all of this? <laughs> How are you still standing now and have the energy to do everything you do? Well, you know, because I did this accelerated program, it was seven years, college and medical school all together. When I started my first year of medical school, I wasn't 21 yet. And you know, the drinking age in the United States is 21. So when they had their opening party, welcoming the students to the medical school, I was the sole student <laughs> not invited. Oh, you couldn't even so I mean, come on, that's so messed that's up. Rude, I didn't mean yeah. <laughs> like, no, that's a good start. laugh at my pain, because it's, <laughs> it's, it's good. Um, your story's incredible. Quickly, and we just found this out in the break, you learned how to box in the last calendar year? Yes, I became a professional fighter and fought on Showtime pay-per-view uh, for my professional debut, and unfortunately lost, but it was a good learning experience. Rigged judging. Yeah, it, it was a judge's judge. decision that yes. I felt I could have gone either way. Having not seen the fight, I don't believe them. <laughs> I think you did well. Okay, for those of you who know what Dr. Mike's about, he's one of the best communicators on social media. He obviously knows his stuff. He's a huge success. For those of you who don't know, we're going to give you a feel of what Dr. Mike is about. We have a lot of viewer questions here. And again, I know you like to personalize to the patient. Yes. But are you, are you willing to take some questions uh, here? Absolutely. All right, let's Perfect. do it. Uh, email from Laura and Devinder. Dear Dr. Mike, soon to be first time parents, do you have any tips for finding a good pediatrician? What should we look for? Well, if you are expecting a baby, you should plan ahead and actually start this search about three months before the baby is due. Because that will allow you to prepare, allow you to find good options, maybe interview a few pediatricians to see if they're a good fit. And my number one recommendation is to ask relatives. Because it is very likely that you will find someone who will understand you, who you will have a healthier line of communication with. And honestly, that is the deciding factor of your health outcomes. If you have a good relationship, not just with your primary care doctor, but with a mental health specialist, that's what gives you the best outcomes. Even better, word of mouth. Okay, we yes. have an email from Ksenia saying, hey, Dr. Mike, I've had a cough for about four weeks. Okay. I've taken antibiotics. Doctors say my lungs are clear, but the cough won't go away. What do I do? Okay, this is tricky because I'm not Ksenia's doctor. Mm -hmm. Um, but what I will say is I would encourage the doctor to a uh, encourage the patient to ask the doctor more questions. There are specific instances where a cough that is going on for a long time may be due to not something infectious. And there's some surprising causes here. Acid reflux. People don't usually communicate or connect that acid reflux can be connected to a chronic cough. But if that acid climbs up to the top of your airway, actually damages your larynx or your pharynx, which is your voice box or the back of your throat, it can create mucus, irritation, make you cough for a really long period of time, or something known as post-nasal drip, which can happen as a result of allergies. So you lie down, you frequently start I getting know these about coughing that fits. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. So I would, I would encourage the, the patient to ask some questions surrounding those two topics. I never would have thought about the acid reflux thing Yeah, there's some all. surprising yeah. ones like that. That's why he's good. We got two minutes. We'll try and cram in as many in two minutes as we can. Uh, email from Beatrice, who writes, Dear Dr. Mike, how often should I be going for a checkup with my family doctor? Haven't been for years. Nothing hurts. Am I good? I would encourage to come in even when you're feeling well. And the reason for that is there's so many ways we can get ahead of problems. We're talking about vaccinations, cancer screenings, uh, even questions about mental health. Like I have patients that come to my office that are feeling completely fine. But then in finding out that they're exposed to certain risk factors, whether it's substance abuse, domestic abuse, we can then act and prevent the problem from becoming worse. So even if you feel fine, go visit your primary care doctor, create that relationship so that when you come in with a problem, you don't have to focus only on the problem. You can now have a whole history to talk about with your doctor as well.
Very good advice. And can we squeeze in another one? Please. We'd love yeah. to. This is okay. how we usually do it in doctor's visits, it by the way. Yeah. Quick, <laughs> it's rapid, rapid fire. fire. We got to get a lot of Let's go. All right. Email from Katrina. Hi, Dr. Mike. I'm always bloated and get random stabbing stomach pains. I've had an ultrasound and other tests, but they are all clear. What could it be? Again, individual question there. What I will say is ultrasound is not usually the best test to uh, evaluate the GI system. Uh, so if we're doing imaging, I would actually discuss with a doctor about potentially doing a CAT scan or an MRI because that will show uh, more of the GI system. Or if we're experiencing a lot of epigastric pain, which is on the top area of the abdomen, if you're having a symptom known as dyspepsia, which is really a catch-all term for when you're eating and you feel full or early satiety where you feel full before you're even eating a lot, mm -hmm. that could be a sign that you need an endoscopy where you actually get a camera uh, put wow. it into your gut as well. Again, we, we, we could do this for two oh, hours. <laughs> uh, Dr. Mike, appreciate you Thank coming you by. Thank you so much. Yeah. Check him so out online. Course, yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. More BT coming up after this. That's Woo! just a case.